And I'll give the floor to Susan Marocora, Chief of the Cabinet of the Secretary General. Thank you, Mr. President, and I'm sorry for having confused you earlier. Uh, good afternoon to uh, all the distinguished delegates. It has been a, a very useful dialogue, and on behalf of the Secretary General, I would like to thank you all for your continuous engagement and support. I would like to make a couple of comments based on the input provided by member states this morning. First, we have a series of conferences lining up that will address the issues uh, put before us regarding medium and long-term and recovery aspects. In a, on the sides of the AU summit on January the 29th, Madam Zuma, chairperson of the African Union, has convened a conference. She has invited the Secretary General, who will be going one day early to the summit precisely to participate and to discuss all these issues. So that this is the first event. Of course, both a Special Envoy and SRG will join the Secretary General. Then is the conference that was already mentioned on March the 3rd, co-chaired by the European Union and the United, the United Nations, that will stay, take stock of what has been done so far, but will again start to focus on what are the long-term needs and perspectives, and the input for these two will come from the, the um, assessment mission that has been deployed earlier in January and has been led by UNDP, but with a broad participation, including the African Union, the World Bank, the African Development Bank, the European Union, and others. So we are already uh, getting the results, and the first cut of the results will be available for the African uh, meeting, but uh, the full-fledged report will be most likely available for the European Union UN meeting. Then the Secretary General plans to put together another conference which hopefully will be at a point where we can say uh, things have really evolved on the ground and the, 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 the peak of the, of the crisis has passed and we really can work and pledge medium and long-term needs. That is not yet defined, but our plans are to do it on May. This is to be confirmed. So, so that you know, there is parallel work being done, not only uh, the work on the ground, but also this background work for all of us to be prepared. And of course, all of this will be fully, fully done with the engagement of the, in, the, the host governments to make sure that the needs assessment is fully, fully uh, um, uh, informed by, by their perspectives. While we do all of this, UMIR is on the ground. There were references to the short-term nature of UMIR. I will want to emphasize this. The Secretary General said this while he visited West Africa. Our main objective is to uh, have UMIR fading out, and I would like to use the word fading out, so we don't leave a vacuum behind. And part of the uh, design that we are trying to, to set in, to embed in UMIR as we go into this next, next phase, and Ishmael has referred to that, is that we do the interventions with the notion of leaving behind as much capacity as possible, even though UMIR itself doesn't have a long-term responsibility, but ensuring that we don't leave a vacuum when the, the, when the mission leaves, particularly with the hope that the mission will be leaving in the next few months. So with all of this, I assure you that under the leadership of the Special Envoy, we're trying to bring together the coalition at the global level. Under the leadership of the Special Representative, we are trying to do that at the, at the country level, at the regional level, and we understand and we hear from you there is a still need for better coordination, but also here in headquarters, we are trying to work as closely together under the instructions and the marching orders that the Secretary General has given us. I just felt that it was important to give you all these connectors to the many activities that are taking place. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I thank Susan for her briefing. 